All right. Welcome back to the wormhole. Uh, myself, Cheebs, in the house. We got my buddy Andy representing Denver, and we've got a special third guest today. Introduce yourself, Mr. Ms. Lone. You can call me the Ms. Lone, Papa Lark, Lavi M. Just happy to be here with you two jabronis. Well, <laughs> welcome, Lavi. So the intro there was smoky. Funny smoky story for you. On like Tuesday of this week, so yesterday, I was driving home, and I was like listening to this our podcast because we like edited it and I was, we were gonna put it up, and all of a sudden I like had the realization of who Smokey was, and I was like, I drove by that guy every day for four years, and he's got like a three string guitar and no teeth. Oh, absolutely, man! The Smoke Dog, the Smoke Dog is a Denver staple. Everyone knows that guy. It's really. How are you doing? I was looking. I was looking for that song again tonight to play it for our our theme song, and I had already deleted the email where we circulated around that. So I had to strategically search specific words on on YouTube again to find it, and it took me a little while. And then afterwards, you know how YouTube curates some videos they think you might like next. Yeah. I went down, I went down another wormhole pretty deep this morning trying to find that video again today. Nice. So uh, last week our inaugural pod we just posted it yesterday. This one will go up sooner. What'd you think? Miz, you're the outsider. You listen to it. What do you got? Critique. Ooh, the critique. Um, good, good content in there. Um, very focused on the Midwest. Uh, some meaningless baseball chatter with the Brewers, who we think are going to just be cellar dwellers. Um, that's mighty fine. Uh, but all in all, I was uh, pretty thoroughly entertained. I like the jokes. Um, I love that it's not FCC approved by any means. Uh, that kind of oh. fits my style. <laughs> That's why you're here. I will say one of the things I thought about is how casually we throw the term lark around. I think it's because people don't know what it means. But it's a, so we're just going to leave it at that. I just Absolutely. found that real hilarious when I was thinking about it today. That's going to be one that goes unexplained, unexplained, yeah. even with even with today's segment. Uh, I got a little feedback, too. Feedback I heard was uh, audio quality needed to be upped a little bit, uh, some... some I heard some things needed to be trimmed, some producing really needed to be in there. Uh, I heard a lot of Brewers chat needed to be toned down a bit. There was a little bit too much Brewers chat. <laughs> so that's, that's some of the feedback that, that I heard over the week. Mm, that's nonsense. That's what I say. The Midwest swing is all about Midwest sports and specifically Brewers because that's me. So we're going to have to deal with that. I will say, too, uh, it's funny to listen to this. I say a lot of dialed man and fantastic. Really drawn out, though, so i got to cut that out. Yeah, I, I noticed that. I think we all have our little quirks. Um, let's see. It's the first podcast. We, we, we ruffled some feathers. Everyone we definitely ruffled, did. We ruffled some feathers. I don't think a, a good podcast should go without its controversy, so uh, we'll handle that. We'll take that. No, and I mean, the best way to play that is to not say anything because you're going to get it again. Like... Just go, oh, that was funny, guys. You busted my chops. Don't be like, uh, I'm going to put a ransom out for some incriminating evidence of you. Oh, man. So what are we going to talk about tonight, Miz? What, uh, uh, what, as our guest podcaster, what do you want to talk about here tonight, my man? Hey, I'm here to follow your rundown. You guys uh, lead me in the direction, and I'm happy to chime in. So, so I think we got to start, like, today was the opening day of the NFL. The NFL never sleeps. It's Goodell's world, and we're all living it, whether we want to admit it or not. Um, let's start with the NFL, man, and let's start with two things. You guys are in Denver, spent the last five years in Denver, and, I mean, so Manning retires last week, or on Tuesday, right? Yep. That was a big deal. Uh, first thing, I mean, what was the vibe there? I was kind of, personally, I'm like, man, they're talking about putting him in the ring of fame. Dude was there four years. They didn't really win the Super Bowl because of him. He was kind of a garbage quarterback last year. Uh, Elway is like stroking him off on the podium. I mean, what what's the what's the vibe around there? Were people pissed? Are people like Elway's, or I mean, Manning's ours? Man, I think it was about time he made an announcement. Uh, that, uh, that noodle alarm wasn't going anywhere in 2016. Um, you know, I think the fans were pretty pleased, myself included, uh, that he brought a championship here to Denver. Uh, but by no means was it because of him. You know, um, that defense kind of kicked ass, and phew, um, they weathered the Manning storm. 
Um, and I think there was genuine excitement, and I'm sure we'll get into this, that the quarterback of the future was on the roster and was going to stay. Um, oops, that ain't the case. Trevor, oh, let's just get into that. I mean, so oh, go. Sorry, Eddie. I said enter Trevor Seaman. <laughs> is that the third stringer? He is the only Broncos quarterback on the roster right now, I believe. I love it, man. I think – um. so I want to know, though, like – and maybe this wasn't ever brought up, but I got to think, like, are people kind of like, should this guy be up there with the Steve Atwaters, the Elways, uh, Davis? I mean – What's the take on what's the take of the town there? Is he is he a Bronco for life? Does he go into the ring? I can't see that. Man, they just put Pat Bolin in the ring and he's been the owner for for thirty years delivering his third championship. Um so I man, I can't, You're not I can't remember this one out there. Yeah. I think I think they will. I think there's no reason to do it. He brought him a Super Bowl, he took him to another Super Bowl. Doesn't didn't he set the touchdown record? What he what he got toss for last year he set the passing record last year in a broncos uni i think there's enough stuff there to put him in that ring of fame retire hey, you put him up in indy both the guy's gonna go down as one of the greatest greatest quarterbacks if not the greatest quarterback statistically of all time so uh, i mean i don't i mean he's definitely gonna retire a colt but i think but here's that, my thing here's my thing like is Five years from now, when we talk about Peyton Manning, we're talking about Peyton to Marvin Harrison or Reggie Wayne. We're not talking about, like, Peyton to Wes Welker when he was around or Eric Decker. I mean, like, his stats, 80% of his career was was in the Colts uniform. Plus, yeah, he won a Super Bowl, but he won a Super Bowl because of him in Indy. Here, he was, a, he was Trent Dilfer. Yeah. Two things, just thinking about Peyton in the uh, in the Hall of Fame here, that I think would be really funny is, A, if his bust in Canton had just a f- massive forehead on it. I mean, like, cartoon character <laughs> big. Uh, another funny thing is if his bust was actually just him mooning some chick in an athletic training room. I think both of those would be pretty pretty comical. With, like, Cooper peering around the side, because you know that like, Cooper just follows him everywhere he goes. I, I, would, I would love the still frame of Manning just dropping a little gonzo on that lady's face, man. How, did you watch the press conference at all? I have a TV, like, in my office, so I was watching this thing. Did you see I, it? So somebody didn't... asked him about that. Someone was like, so what are you going to do about that assault thing? And he's like, I was 19, you do dumb shit, and that's him. Like, you just admitted to sticking your balls in some chick's face against her will. That's a man. horrible, horrible look. Man, and I've heard some weird stories about Manning, too. Like, I have no proof of this, but I've heard, like, just odd things about he's not as wholesome as he sounds. Yeah, like every Papa John's pizza you get has a couple Manning pubes sprinkled in there. Yeah, and I, like, so when I was in Baton Rouge, I had a buddy, like, that was tied into that Manning camp somehow down in, uh, down way in the boot, Modelo. I like that. And, like, he would just tell me stories about how, Manning and Eli, or Eli and Fate would just get in it with these nasty slump chicks. <laughs> None of this surprises me because, A, he's a uh, he's an SEC quarterback. So exactly. Kind of what comes with the territory. All right. So, so the next, about, the next about quarterback. Was that? I was going to say, we talked about Peyton, but now it's time to get on to the big topic of the day. The big topic of the day. The Brocket launcher. <sighs> Brock, Brock Weiler over there. Bolting the Broncos for the Houston Texans in a lot, a lot, a lot of guaranteed money. Miz, what do you uh, what do you think of this? As a Broncos fan, I am incredibly happy they did not pay him that money. Um, I man, I heard this stat that since his freshman year in college at Arizona State, Brock Osweiler has started all of twenty one games. Wow. 21 games, and he just got million 37 million guaranteed. Do the math. That's like, what is that? That's like 900 something thousand a game that he's got paid for. Track um, record. Yeah, more. It's probably like 1.3 million for every start. Is he just gotten guaranteed cash? Oh yeah, 30, 20. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, does anyone have a 411 on Matty Ice? Because I heard he was really into the Brocket launcher. I don't. I don't even know what that means. The Ice Man. Man. Yeah, he, he really liked Osweiler. He was like guy of the future. 
So I just want to know if he's alive or he's stumbling around the streets of Denver just drunk, like, what are we going to do now? Because it's going to be Kaepernick or RG3. I mean, who else? Oh, man, that's terrible. I, I cannot. I honestly can't believe. I know it's too much money. It's way more than he's proven to, to be able to earn, but I can't believe the Super Bowl winning team just decided to do that and is literally going to go in with a brand new quarterback in their system. Man, it kind of blows my mind. I mean, you go what you go the free agent route you just talked about, Kaepernick or RG3, aka damaged goods, terrible damaged goods, uh, or you go young, unproven, or you go like an older game manager, Brian Hoyer or Fitzmagic, one of those guys. Oh, Fitzmagic is out there. That's a good call. Man, Fitzmagic is going to get paid a ton of money. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they were a game away from doing some damage in the playoffs. Man, I, I. I don't know. I don't. I don't see that. One, Kaepernick is not a free agent. They'd have to trade for him. They'd actually have to give something up to get that bummy lark in town. Skeeter, <laughs> man, and I've man, believe it or not, I've heard the name Chase Daniel thrown around too. I thought the Eagles picked him up. He just signed oh. big today. Yeah, well, the, yeah, that. off, off the, the market, bro. I mean, this is going to be a Matt Flynn scenario. You're going to pay someone like $10 million to come in for a year or two just to try and work it out. That's going to suck. I mean, this team is going to go. They lost a ton on defense, too. Like, I think Denver, it's going to be a struggle for them to make the playoffs next year. I don't know about that. We'll uh, we'll see. I think the route you go is you go after a guy like an RG3. I give him a one-year prove-it kind of deal. I mean, he's not going to command. I don't know how many other guys are going to command it. And then you either use your second-round pick on a quarterback, your third-round pick on a quarterback you like, one of those guys like Connor Cook or someone that has a little bit of upside, and then maybe even get a third guy, just like some veteran, Charlie Whitehurst or whoever out there can compete. You let all three of them freaking compete and see who wins the job, man. I think that's – you go high risk high reward, or high potential – Low, you know, low investment. You go with a young guy, and then you just get a proven guy that can at least not that Charlie Whitehurst can play, but whoever's the best guy out there, you know. There's no way they bring in RG3 because Shanahan hates him and that connection with Elway. There's no way. I but, I don't know who's out there, man. They got to fill out at least a couple spots at the quarterback position going into camp. Uh, Andy's yeah. right. They clearly draft somebody, right? First two rounds. Um, but man, I don't know that you can't get Fitzmagic in town for less than thirteen million. I bet you'd have to pay damn near ten to get Brian Hoyer. Um, it's gonna be Connor Cook, baby. Dak Prescott. Dak. <laughs> no, man. Did you see my favorite part about this too? Is Elway's response? Elway's such a blowhard. I and this is I hate. Elway because of 98 and they beat the Packers and everyone sucked his dick when all that really happened was Terrell Davis like drove him to a championship yada 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 whatever but I, Elway was like we want people here that want to be Broncos we made him a deal he didn't want to be a Bronco just that giant horse mouth kept blabbering on but he is fucked man yeah rough rough situation all right all but right then again, real quick so you win a championship that buys you like three years right three to five Oh, dude, Elway is safe for decades. Like, even if the team sucks next year, it's like, I got my 2016 Super Bowl shirt. I don't really care. Oh, they're way good. Man, he's not going anywhere. Elway's a oh, state. Yeah, he's here. not going to fire him. That's what I'm saying. All right, uh, I, any thought other great, great, I just thought of a great, uh, a great kind of analogy of to where this is going to go. It just played out in my mind. I've just seen it's literally six years down the road, and I know exactly what's going to happen, Broncos fans. Listen up. John Elway, John Elway is slowly turning into Joe Dumars. He's going to put on 10 to 15 pounds this year. He's really going to just start piling pounds on every year. He just lost his quarterback, so he essentially just traded Chauncey Billups off the team. The team is slowly going to crumble away. He's going to eat himself out of the out of management. They're going to can him, and the team is just going to bottom out. Boom, six years. Right. So 22. If that's the case, in three years – who is the NFL version of Charlie Villanueva? <laughs> Ryan Shazier, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had to pick somebody else with alopecia, and that's literally the only way I had the name. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, 
any other free agent? I mean, like, the Packers, of course, did nothing. They sit there and, like, Ted Thompson doesn't ever do free agents. We brought in, like, two since, like, he's been around. Good ones, but whatever. I thought they were going to get Forte. I thought Forte could be a really good pick for him, but... And I think he only got paid, like, $4 million a year, and so I'm kind of pissed that they didn't pony that up. But, little known fact, I think they didn't because Eddie Lacy's hooked up with the P90X guy, and he's getting shredded in Jackson Hole, Wyoming all winter, man. He's dropped, like, 40 pounds already. He's going to beat about everybody. He, he says it's P90X. You know that shit's Billy Blanks, Tybo. Like, that's <laughs> way more Lacy style. Unbelievable. Billy Blanks. I honestly can picture Eddie Lacy. Like, just tie bowing it up in his room with Billy Blanks just yelling at him. So I told my buddy, I told my buddy, I was like, we should go to Jackson and try and find Eddie, because it's not going to be hard to find Eddie Lacey in a ski town in January. Dude, he probably looks like Ben Stiller from Dodgeball right now, just thinking about rubbing that cheese pizza all over his dick because he can't eat it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so that's the Packers, the Lions. Lions going with Haloti Nada again. Bring yep. him back. Resigned Haloti Nada, resigned our other defensive tackle, which was good because they didn't have a single defensive tackle on the roster before today. They also paid really big money to Marvin Jones from Cincinnati. I think he's Saw getting that. $8 million a year with a decent guaranteed number. So uh, borderline number one. Give borderline me my first so one. dumb. Give me my first so dumb and let's talk about Kelvin. Yeah, the big news of the week, obviously, is the Megatron Don retiring. Um, I mean, reports have been out for months that he was going to do it. I was always pretty hesitant. I thought he'd come back and play. I still think he wants to go play for a contender. I know that's the, the easy one, but uh, how do you hang it up when you're that good? I understand it's a business, you know, it's a life decision and all, but I don't know how you hang it up coming off a bad year for him where he still had 80 catches and 1,200 yards, you know, and you're 29. I mean, I don't know what to think about all these retirements, minus, like, Peyton. Peyton sucked. But, I mean, like, Marshawn, too? Like, I don't know. It's, so you think Kelvin's done. You think he's retired. I think I think he wanted – I think that his contract was untradeable, and he had a little bargaining power because I think if he stuck around, it was like a Manning situation where he was going to cost the Lions, like, 20 mil. Mm -hmm. And because he left, it was only going to, like, have that in dead money so they could still – have it. I think it was just the PR way to get him on the street. Yeah, yeah. but it, once you file for, for retirement, I don't think he can play this year. He'll essentially have to sit it out and file for reinstatement the following year. Is that it? I don't I, I don't know. That's kind of what I what I think. And then he would be free to sign. They've no longer owned his rights and he could choose the team. Something like that. I mean, it's 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 crazy. I don't I don't honestly know if he's gonna do that. He seems like a smart guy. I think he's gonna go into the next chapter of his life, which is crazy. But uh, means a couple things here in this household. It means a two jerseys in the Ruminab household are now legacy jerseys. I had a home, <laughs> I had a home Calvin, and Christy bought a an away Calvin, a woman's away Calvin for herself in January of this year, literally like the last week of the season. So she's had Why that. would you do that? He hadn't announced he was going to retire at that point yet. But he's like, he's old, man. If you, this last year, if you're going to buy a jersey, you got to like, you got to go big and go with someone that's going to be around. It came, I love like, those people that bought rock jerseys. It came, from, it came from a Ross. You have a limited selection in a Ross, okay? We dress for less here. Fair, fair point. I could loan Christy my Amir Abdullah jersey. Yes, I have and own one of those. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, and why do you own an Amir Abdullah jersey again? My lovely mother-in-law is a big Nebraska Cornhuskers fan, and so throughout the years I have received an Indomica Sioux and an Amir Abdullah Lions jersey. <laughs> so what jerseys are in your closet right now? Because you have a Tebow jersey too. <laughs> Fuck, I do. Uh, let's think. I've got a, I got a Tebow. I got the Manning five head. Um, I have a stolen Kobe Bryant jersey. I'm sure. Um, possibly could find a Breckenridge '69 jersey. You have like a Breck '69. Like, is that a do tour shirt? No, it literally says Breckenridge '69. <laughs> Did you buy that in your, uh, in your dual bicycle days? Your tandem. No. 
Gosh, that was actually a, uh, a lovely ski trip where I watched our one and only Andy Rumenap knock over an entire stand, a pyramid of empty nail jeans in a department store. Yeah, probably probably 25 to 30 nail jeans set up in a nice, nice big pyramid down all over the ground. Were you sober? No. Uh, not quite. <laughs> it's not like quite. dominoes. That's hilarious. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, let's see. Outside of, uh, outside of the, the Calvin news, there was um, a couple other big things. Some trades. Some trades happened this week. Uh, anything we want to touch on there? The Finns sounds like the Finns and the Eagles made a deal with Kiko Alonso going, and then Demarco Murray. Did Demarco Murray get traded to the Titans? So they basically just flushed everything Chip Kelly did down the drain. Yet he goes and gets another job with full control immediately. I mean, is is uh, so? What's your take on Murray? I mean, like, is he gonna be good again? I mean, I don't know. They had, I thought they already had a couple of decent running backs on that roster, at least guys they've invested in in the last couple of years. Antonio Andrews and oh, Bishop Sankey. Don't aren't those both like first, second, or third round picks? And now they yeah. add Demarco in the mix. Fucking, I hate Bishop Sankey. He is that guy I take every year in a fantasy draft, being like, Bishop Sankey's gonna blow up this year. And then he just sucks in week three. Man, they got they got David Cobb too. David Cobb, yeah. the other Absolutely. And don't they have McCluster? And McCluster gets like three carries a game. So they just have six different guys running the ball. I don't know, man. That that franchise is weird. I think too, yeah. like I think the the winners, the Texans got better, right? Oh they yeah. Paid a lot of money. Paid a lot of money, but they got some fun players. I mean, Brock has a lot of upside. Lamar Miller has a lot of upside. You pair that with Poop and P. Hopkins, and you got a uh, you got a nice little trio there. I mean, J.J. Watt's just doing, like, box jumps right now in celebration, right? While, while DeAndre Hopkins is just throwing bags of Poop and pee all over the hotel room. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. Again. Again. Um... Let's see, anybody else you guys want to hit on? I mean, like I said, not a whole lot going on in my in my team's fandom. I think the big one were the Lions doing their thing, and it really catastrophe for the Lions and, uh, <laughs> and kind of the Broncos, which I'm kind of – I'm into it, whatever. <laughs> I think that one thing that's kind of lame, like, I, back to Kelvin, I mean, that just must be a shitty franchise to play for. You don't walk away – like, like you were saying, the dude turned down – he basically turned down $24 million to, like, say, I don't want to play for this team anymore. This sucks. For the second time in the last 25 <laughs> years, with our two greatest players in the history of the franchise, mine is Jason Hansen. <laughs> I point. mean, what do yeah. you got for it's disappointing, dude. They the Lions have been football killers for so long. I have so many friends that have given renounced the Lions for the team that you know, like where they've moved to the city. They are a terrible, terrible organization. Uh, I mean, probably the worst in professional football. Uh, Raiders. Who else is right? The Browns. The factory of sadness is real, real bad. I wouldn't yeah, want. To I mean, the Browns definitely would have something to say about your <laughs> your your situation. Dude, at least, at least they've made it to a Super Bowl before, though. <laughs> Good point. Even the Jags have made it. <laughs> and the Panthers, the franchise of expansion teams. What do you think the Vegas odds would be for the Browns and the Lions to meet in the Super Bowl? Oh, I'm, it's not even on the board. There's no way. I might just start putting twenty twenty dollars on that every single year for the year that it does hit finally. I mean that that's in like the plus. Ten thousands more. Oh, than way that. more, Jake. Way more. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's, it's not even on the board. Not on the board, but yeah, we should do. We should continue with more. more. I mean, I'll will tell you what though. In Mesquite, I want to watch you go up to the counter, and I want you to like ask them if they can give you the odds on that. <laughs> I want you to be like, hey, I want the odds on the Lions going to the Super Bowl to play the Browns. <laughs> I'd also like to parlay that with uh, Megatron winning the NFL MVP. <laughs> and Barry going over 1,500 yards. <laughs> I bet Barry could still play and at least get 800 yards. 
I mean, yeah. So, is there sports gambling in Mesquite? No, we'll be in Vegas for a night. Yeah, you guys will. The guys well, that are it, the guys that are going two days early to the already long long week. No, weekend. there's a book. There's a there's a sports book in Mesquite. It's like four lazy boys and like six flat screens, but there's a sports book in there. You're gonna love this casino. Uh, do you have your club card lined up, Miss? Are you, you know where that is? Oh, dude, my name is just on file. Man, I walk in there and they just recognize uh, that guy's gonna play some pie gal and drink a whole shit ton of whiskey. <laughs> Seat him next to one of these gray hairs, and let's get it going. Um, let's well, go to the NBA, man. So, well, one last, one last, oh. one last, uh, one last topic we needed to cover. Miz, in in one sentence, please give me. Actually, I'll give you two sentences. Two sentences. Give me a Joseph Randall life update. <laughs> two sentence. Now it's time for your two sentence Joseph Randall life update. Joseph Randall is really struggling to find slash steal underwear that fits his tiny penis. <laughs> and he's eagerly trolling around town looking for a white lady to put on his arm. <laughs> That's a good plan, actually. That's a good plan. All right, this has been your two-sentence Joseph Randall life update. What right, is going to be the theme song, the jingle for the Randall Joseph, uh, or Joseph Randall life update? Kind of like a more you know, but what what song could you do? No, I think we just recycle the the Matt Garza dumpster fire from last week. We can play that. <laughs> or it's just a car accident because he just got in a car wreck. Just a screech crash. <laughs> our whole our whole sound set is gonna be like fire crash, fire crash, and just play that for every guest. Oh uh, man, the Lions one would just be sobbing, or you just going so dumb, so dumb, so dumb. <laughs> So uh, NBA man, so you guys are you guys are avid NBA NBA fans. Miz more so. You're like you're like a wannabe Bob Volgaris. <laughs> extraordinary. Hey. Uh, what do you got? Give me something on the Pistons. Man, I think uh, coach slash GM, the sexual hedgehog, Stan Van Gundy. <laughs> Looks looks like he knows what he's doing. There's some positive signs there. I mean, he's got a shitty team battling, you know, for that eighth spot. Um, man, only a half game behind the Bulls right now, or as of yesterday, I think. Why do you want the eighth spot? Like, that just seems counterproductive. Man, I, I would prefer the eighth spot just to get a tiny bit of playoff experience for the young guys. I mean, if you just miss the playoffs, you're not going to do anything in the lottery. You know, you're picking, what is that, 13 through 15. Um, anyway, so I think you might as well try to tack on, you know, five, six extra games at the end of the year and, and get some playoff experience. I don't know. Totally agree. Experience is huge in the playoffs, man. And if you don't get it when you're young, the Pistons starting five is averaging like 20 – they're like 24 years of age. They're all – ridiculously young, and they're even younger when you add in Stanley Johnson because he's, like, 19 and he's the sixth man off the bench. But they have, like, a combined 200 playoff appearances, whereas every other team that's, like, in contention right now has at least, like, 700, 800, or, like, 600. Like, they were crazy num- they were crazy numbers. So I just think getting a little bit of experience, even if you get swept by the Cavs or, you know, win one game against them or the Raptors, you just get a taste of playoff basketball. Helps, that helps with the future, and that's what this team needs right now. Yeah, I guess you never know. I mean, is Brennan Jennings still over there? No, they dealt him at the deadline. He was part of the Tobias Harris. They went him and him and Ilya Sova to the Magic for Tobias Harris. So that's right. That was the three former Buck trade. That is their. Uh, that's right. Three former Bucks. That's all cheap sends me that night is. I love that the trade tonight contained all Bucks. <laughs> um, they're they're bad, bad, bad at backup point guard though. I uh, I watch quite a few of the Pistons games and they are, I mean they are thin. It's Stevie Blake and he plays like a lot of minutes, pretty poorly. And then uh, Miz's favorite, the mayor of Boulder, Colorado, Spencer Dinwiddie. Miz, how do you feel about Spence Dinwiddie? I mean, solely based on that mullet stash, you have to respect him and know that he can handle the job. Is he still rocking that? Oh, dude, when you got a mullet stash and you're a lark, you don't get to get rid of that anytime soon. It's just that you got to <laughs> do it. Jake, what, uh, what's, what's the haps with the, uh, with the Bucks? They look like they're playing a little bit better basketball right now. I mean, 
No, not really. Uh, here, guys are playing better. Like <laughs> they're losing. They're on like a three-game losing streak. They're gonna. They're just ended up going down to the Bulls right now. I was just checking the score. But what is exciting, man, is Giannis and Jabari and Chris are just doing things. Like, um, so they moved Giannis to the point guard. He's had, like, three triple-doubles since that's happened. Jabari's scoring 20 a game. K-Mid is doing things. Uh, the rest of the team's just awful hot garbage. I mean, O.J. Mayo's a corpse. Uh, John Henson doesn't play because he's hurt all the time. Uh, MC Dub sucks. I mean, their whole... The moose thing that did not work. He just is a just this giant statue clog in the middle of everything that gets rebounds, but he can't really do anything. He can't move. Like he's just. I've never seen. I have never seen a guy who's that talented, like with the basketball passing it, post moves, be so unathletic and slow. It's ridiculous. You know what it is? It's like watching tall girls play basketball. You're like, oh, oh. you're tall, so you should be good at basketball, and then it's like, oh no. You're a girl. You're not that good. But uh, he, just to, he just needs to fulfill his legacy and quit the NBA, move to Denver, and operate Monroe's Liquors, <laughs> Colfax, East Colfax's finest liquor establishment. Yeah, I mean it's Greg Monroe, right? It's not Monroe. You're Monroe correct. at that point. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, that's good. They need to keep losing, man. They need a point guard, MC Dub. He's just not gonna. It's not gonna work. Um, they need to get a guy. The point guard in the draft is pretty thin. We'll probably hit on players later when we talk about the uh, March Madness. But I mean, there's the kid from Providence who's probably the best point guard, but he's like top five projected right now. And the Bucks are. See, this is where I agree with you guys in the playoffs because the Bucks are gonna find themselves in like no man lottery land. Like you're gonna be like pick ten through fifteen, and that just sucks. You're, you're getting the same guy that you'd get if you made the playoffs. And you're not really probably getting a difference maker at that point. Unless you, like, hit gold like they did with Giannis that one year. And he even, he, I mean, he's just turned the corner. But I will say one thing is he might average 20 points a game this year, which would be huge. That's like an eight or nine point per game jump from last year. Yeah, man, Jake, to, to give you some, I don't know, hope, if they can draw the seventh pick in the lottery, right, that's when Steph Curry was picked. Seventh overall. Yep. No, I mean, yeah, you can get a good guy. They just really need a point guard, and there's not a lot of them this year. So it's like, that. But you can always trade. I mean, like, the Brandon Knight trade actually ended up being okay because I think he's not doing that well. He's kind of flopped over in, in Phoenix. And they've got a good core of Middleton, Parker, man. I think the knee thing bothered him all first half, and he's just exploded. So that's pretty good. Um, he's, been, he's been hot the last couple weeks, man. He's had some monster games, some monster jams. Saw him hit some threes for the first time all season. I mean, he's starting to turn around. Yeah, did you see I, – I posted that on the blog, but, like, Giannis's stat line in the last – since the All-Star game is, like, 20 points, 11 boards, 8 assists, a few steals, and a couple blocks a game. That's crazy. And he's, like, throwing down those monster, like, jams where he takes one step from the free throw line. It, like, travels the half court in three steps, but – um, we talked about the Warriors last week. We go pump them up. We're like, oh, they're going to set the record. Are they, like, losing interest? How do you lose to the Lakers? I uh, That was a ridiculous loss, man. The Lakers destroyed them. It was never a game. It was, like, double digits the entire game. Man, you're going to get nights off. I mean, again, they still can lose. Uh, I don't know. I think they're one ahead of where the Bulls were at this point, so they're still in good shape as long as they continue to win games. But I think the more discerning part is uh, some of the guys not playing as much. I mean, they're banged up a little bit. Curry missed a game or two in there. Iguodala has been out a couple of those games. Draymond is a complete head case all of a sudden, has no shot anymore. Yeah. Out of, out of anywhere, he's like not blocking shots all up from all over the court, bouncing off the rim and whatnot. So I'm not super concerned, but they're definitely not as sharp as they were at one point in the season when they were just a well-oiled machine. So I honestly think that like after those two OKC games and after the Spurs game, those were like big things for them. And then I don't think they care about the record. I think they just want to win another ship. And when they play these like garbage teams, they're like, ah, it is what it is, you know? Like... They're in the playoffs. They're focused on a championship, and I think if they get the record, it's just a good product. But they're not like gunning for it. 
Man, here's a, what's that? Here, here, here's a pretty funny stat. Right now, both the Warriors and the Spurs have clinched playoff spots with, like, 20 games to go in the year. Dude, so that's so crazy. Is that, like, what, what are the Warriors, like, four games up on the one seed right now? And they, they're, like, flirting with the Bulls record? But they played the Spurs three times down the stretch. How crazy is that? It's yeah, just crazy, it's crazy that they're not like ten games up. But uh, and the Spurs just got uh, Kevin Martin. Is Kevin Martin white? No, he's black. He's going in the list. Uh, <laughs> uh, man, um, um, did I just see, got a text did real quick. Andrew, did you guys see Andrew Bogut's pre pre Steph Curry shot celebration from last night? Yeah, he started, like, running, like, the ball was, like, in Steph's hands. That's awesome, man. Somebody who's really good at, like, Photoshopping needs to just trip, trim out Andrew Bogut running with his hand up like that and plug it into every other video or picture on the Internet. I, we need to contract somebody. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I just got a text that Danny Trevathan only went four years, $28 million. That seems low for him. Sorry to jump to the NFL. Who do you go to? Oh. Yeah, the Bears. What were you going to say, Miz? Uh, man, I, I, I don't think it's a terrible contract. I mean, Trevathan's been so hurt these last couple of years that, that man, if he can stay on the field, he's a tackling machine. He's a good cover guy. Um, I think he just wanted to go back and reunite with Foxy. I think so, too. So sorry to jump, sorry to jump there. Uh, Rumi, what else you got in the NBA, man? Man, I heard a pretty funny story the other night watching the Pistons game. Um, the color analyst or the sideline analyst was doing just like a little timeout expo on Andre Drummond and talking about how he's visiting a psychiatrist now to get his free throw struggles fixed. The guy's shooting in the 30% in the this year from free throw. Dead last in the NBA. He gets hacked all the time, throwing him on the line. They have to take him out to the last two minutes a half sometimes, so... Um, it, uh, yeah. hi, Jill. Hey, hey, Miz, I think you're muted. There you go. Um, yeah, just trying to eliminate some noise. Oh. So, I thought, I thought that was a pretty funny story. Oh, hello, Jill. Oh, we have a fourth guest. Jill, say what's up to the pod world. Oh, hey. You know, I don't think I'm made for the radio, so I'll leave you boys to it. <laughs> it sounded like, like, never mind, I was going to say something awful there. Um, <laughs> that sounded like a 900 number. So I thought that was a pretty funny story. Drummond needing to go to the psychiatrist. Um, another free throw shooting story. Did you guys see what Hassan Whiteside is doing and what it's doing for his free throw shot? No. He's literally started shooting, like, catch-and-shoot jumpers. Like, he catches the ball and shoots it <laughs> as, soon as, they, as soon as they blow it. Over, like, the last six or seven games, and he's shooting, like, 80%. At one point, he was 24 of 25, and his free throw percentage has raised, like, 10 or 11 points since he started doing this like five or six games ago. Does he yell, make it rain when he does it? Like, I mean, that's what I feel. That's like a total hard on move. What if he gets like a bad pass from the ref? Does he just pass it back and be like, put it on me, man? <laughs> I don't know, man. You need to, uh, you need to look for the video. It, it's outstanding. I had heard about it and then I randomly saw it on TV and, uh, oh, they were playing the Bucks tonight and I was watching some of the Bucks before getting prepped for the show. And they showed it, and he just caught it and just put up a quick jumper real quick. It was, I mean, it's awesome. Good for Hassan. How, how do you shoot that bad from the line? Like, how is Drummond, th like, three for ten? And how is, like, the same with DeAndre? I don't get it. Like, did these guys never play pickup basketball where they had to shoot to play? I mean, that's why you learn to shoot free throws, because you're like, I don't want to be the joker sitting on the sidelines. When you're six foot eleven, you don't have to do that. You're the first pick every time. I guess that's true. Um, hey, I want to know the story. You ran into Big Jew and Mike Miller? Oh, no, no, no. Not Big Jew. The new guy. The new oh, guy. Nicole Young. <laughs> so hit me up. What do you got? This has got to be good. Big Jew, because if it was Big Jew, that would mean there's a chance that Papa Jew's there, too. <laughs> and everybody, everybody wants Papa Jew in their life, right, Miz? Yes, indeed. Oh, Jusef Nurkic, man. Oh, I wish it was him. But no, it was it was uh, the new rookie for the Nuggets, Nikola Jokic, who's absolutely balling. They got a, a steal, and they wouldn't uh, wouldn't par depart wouldn't part him with him at the deadline this year. I know a couple teams are really interested in him, um, and he's pretty good. Miz, what do you think of Jokic? They wouldn't give him up for Melo. Sorry, Miz. Go. 
No, you're all good, man. No, Jokic is playing um, good basketball. They got a staple of just massive white Yugos on the team. I mean, you got Jokic, you got Big Jew, you got Joffrey. I mean, it's it's. I I don't know. It's the Caucasian invasion here in the Mile High. You well, what's that Yugoslavian that. liquor? Do you think that's getting run out of town in Denver? No, because you also left out Dan Gallinari, and he runs this town, man. I bet they I bet they operate some Dan sort of shady, some, sort of, some sort of shady European restaurant. What was that place that used to be down in uh, in in Five Points? The like Euro Lounge? Oh, uh, what's it called? <laughs> like Missile Field out in Colorado, like the famous missile base. Oh, Lowry. No, that's the Air Force. Oh, I don't know, but I just decided I need to get out of the oil industry, go back to Denver, and open a place called the Euro Lounge. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so good, like man. Italian cigarettes, man. <laughs> yes. All right. So, so, indoors. <laughs> All right. So Nikola Jokic, right? Okay, so Nikola Jokic and Mike Miller. So I get a chance to bump into them the other night at this – uh, thing that Sports Authority does. It's this volunteer thing that a bunch of us did where you just go and you do like a clinic with the NSCD, the National uh, Sports Center for the Disabled. It's just like a cool organization. So there was a Nuggets hosted basketball clinic that we just volunteered at. And Mike Miller and Nicole Jokic were the athletes that came for the night and took pictures with the kids and autographed stuff for the kids and walked around and did like the drills with the kid with the kids at different stations and stuff like that. And so you, it was, like, you were in there just dominating. Uh, I was running the defense uh, station this week. Christy and I were both running the defense station this week, uh, teaching kids, you know, to stay low, keep your hands up. Miz can attest. I, I know how to play some defense on the pickup court. That's truly my my one my one skill, even though it's all fouls. Uh, but no, they both came around and they, they were pretty awesome. Um, didn't smell great either of them. I don't know if they had just come from practice. They're both wearing <laughs> athletic clothing. But what, I mean, what if you could describe like, give me a couple adjectives. Like, give me like, was, uh, give me something they smell like. Like a hero. Just, they smell no, like was, a, a thing of lamb meat. What do you got? No. It, it was just B.O. It was it was B.O. I think it was Jokic. It was okay. <laughs> it was bad, though. It was bad. It smelled like, I don't know, you know, like when hockey players walk by you after, after a game off the ice, like their pad equipment. It wasn't quite that bad, but not good. I just feel like if you went to, like, Sarajevo and got off the airplane, that's what you would smell. That's my, like, Eastern European, like, that's awful. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I don't know, man. That's that's pretty solid geography. That's a uh, that's a solid capital city uh, name drop, dude. No, man. So when I lived in college, like uh, we our next door neighbors were these Bosnians, and so that's that's how I know that stuff. Anyways, I'll say something bad if I keep going. Um, yeah. I said we, we move off keep, the subject. We I said we move aside and war crimes out of this podcast. <laughs> I was gonna say I said we move off based on those last couple comments from Chiefs. I said we move off this subject immediately. Well, that's pretty last, awesome, man. Running into NBA talent. The last five minutes have all been about the <laughs> the European <laughs> European Nuggets that all hang out and operate a shady business together, and now we're talking Sarajevo. I mean, we're getting weird here, man. It's the wormhole, buddy. This is what happens, man. We're getting deep into the wormhole. Ah, uh, so let's hit on the NCAA tourney, and then we're gonna get into what I'm calling right now the abstract, which is the last three topics we've all kind of kicked emails around. We're going to have to give a warning before we go talk about that because people just might want to stop listening. Or this is what they're listening for. Uh, I have not followed college basketball at all very much. I mean, LSU's been just a shit show because the coach sucks. They have the best player in the country, going to be the number one pick, and they can't win games. Um. So, what do you got for me on that, man? Give me the, give me your dark horse, or give me your teams. Who to look out for? Uh, man, it. Uh, I mean, it's a, uh, it's early. I'm, selection Sunday will uh, will prove a lot. I know the bracket's still shaking out. Um, but if we're talking about teams that I think have, have it all to uh, to take it down, I mean, I, got, I guess you kind of got to go with the front runners right now. I think Kansas is really solid. I think Michigan State is really solid. Um, I think Carolina, I know they slipped a little bit in the second half. They're pretty solid. Virginia seems to be good, but they're that team that perennially lets me down. 
Um, I mean, I think you really got to ride the ride the top seeds right now. Miz, what do you think? I, I I would totally agree. I put four teams that I think can actually win it: UNC, Sparty, Kansas, and a tiny bit of somebody that maybe people don't watch because it's West Coast, uh, but the Oregon Ducks. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you're not Oklahoma. You're not you're not buying into Buddy. I don't know that he can do it alone. So I I certainly expect him. Man, they're a Sweet 16. They're an Elite Eight team, almost uh, assuredly. But I think something will something will trip him up. They'll get a bad matchup, and and if a good defensive team can lock him down and and say prove it to the rest of the squad, I don't know. The, yeah, uh, the Buffs are in, right? They won like 22 games this year, or something like that, or came close to setting their record, right? They're in, right? Yeah, the Buffs played well. They had a couple good wins down the road. I know they just beat Arizona last week. Solid win. The Arizona's going to be another good team. They're always going to be there, and that's a that's a big win. Yeah, I think it, they're definitely... Is Michigan in, or do they have to do some things in the tournament? Yeah, I think they're I think they're in trouble. I think they have to win two games in the tournament in the Big Ten tournament to get out, and I think that's going to be tough. I think they uh, I, I I do. I mean, they've got twenty wins. They've got ten or I think nine or ten wins in the Big Ten. But they've gotten, I mean, they've gotten destroyed lately. Yeah. They haven't really beaten that many good teams. I know they beat Maryland one time, but then they beat, I mean, a couple, of, like Texas, who's going to be in the tournament. But they've, they've gotten blown out by Iowa, Maryland, Michigan State consistently. I mean, they are a good t- a tier below those teams for sure. That sucks. I mean, LSU, they're not going to make the tournament. Like, I think everybody wants them to because of Ben Simmons. They yeah. have an sh- outside shot if they can get to the SEC championship game because to do that they'd have to beat two tournament teams, including one that'll be like a, you know, maybe a three seed or higher, like an A and M. So if they can beat Vandy, A and M, and then they probably still have to beat Kentucky and win it. But you know what kills them is there's been a, like I think there's been a couple teams that have won their tournaments that are Robin bids like GB, UWGB won the Horizon and they're gonna they're gonna steal one because I think who was supposed to win the Horizon League is going to make the tournament. And so it's just, oh, uh, yeah, Velpo. Velpo was supposed to win it. They're going to make the tourney. Um, I will say, I was looking at, like, Lenardi's bracketology, and I think the four five seeds are going to be super dangerous this year. Like, can you, like, you're one seed in the Sweet 16, you're looking at someone like a Kentucky, a Purdue. Uh, there's there's some good A&M would be another, like, four five seed team. Cal, Man. like there's some good four or five seed teams that it's a deep tournament. You're probably right, Miz. There's probably only like three or four teams that could actually win it. But there's yeah. some. I think I think the Big Ten's really going to represent. Man, I don't know if I'm just buying into the hype, but I think they've got some really really strong teams. I mean, you just talked about Purdue, but we haven't even mentioned Indiana, who won the conference outright by a couple games. Wisconsin, who got real hot in the second half. I don't know if they can make a ton of noise, but they could knock off somebody that they're not supposed to. I mean, Sparty, oh. Maryland was it has an unbelievable team. I really, I think Maryland, I know they fell apart in the second half, but I think that's a team nobody's going to want to play because Melo Trimble can get it going, plus they have they have a couple other guys. Diamond Stone, the best name in college basketball right now. Diamond Stone. Man. Star freshman. Dude is a, an that, absolute uh, That guy really wanted – he's from Wisconsin. So, like, Wisconsin had two top, like, 20 recruits last year, and none of them went to Madison because they couldn't do the academic thing. But speaking of Wisconsin, uh, sidebar, Bo Ryan's story. This is crazy. Like, so Bo Ryan left, right, in January – and everyone was like, why the hell didn't he just leave when they made the championship game? Go out, you're getting another beer. Um, and it was nuts. And everyone was like, well, maybe it was because they wanted this Greg Gard guy to take over, and that was his dude. Well, turns out my dad comes to visit, like, I don't know, like December. And I'm like, what do you think of that Bo Ryan thing? And he goes to me, he's like, oh, did you hear the real reason he left? And I was like, wow, what do you got, Pops? Like, let me know. He's like, it's because he was boinking his neighbor. He used the word boinking, by the way. That's my dad's word for, for boning. He's like, he was boinking his, the neighbor lady. And I was like, that's that's so crazy weird, like Bo Ryan's old balls, right? And anyways, uh, so I'm like, whatever. I emailed some buddies in Wisconsin. They're like, yeah, that story got really weird because apparently the university found out, thought he was, like, using funds from the university. And there was a weird investigation. They kind of just told him to go away, and it got swept under the rug. And I, I just think that's crazy that 
UW buried that story so well that Bo Ryan's reputation probably doesn't take a hit to the general public. Man, I don't know. Bo is, he's a, I heard about that story over this weekend too. Ridiculous. He's one of those guys that's been so good for that program. It's just going to get swept under the rug, just like you said. That's not going to matter. Well, it's like crazy that. to me how, like, if it would have come out right away, that it would have been, this is nuts. If it came out three months later, no one gives a shit. But anyways, that's just especially not, when the, especially not when the team started playing. Like, they got good at that point. Yeah, in reality, I just wanted to tell the Jeffrey DeHammer blinking story. So we can move on now. Great. All right, I got a couple guys in the NCAA who are going to make the NCAA tournament that I want everyone to watch. These are guys that I've seen play a handful of times this year. I really like them. I don't know um, what you guys think about this. But guys that I really like, I mentioned Diamond Stone. He's a diaper dandy, as Dick Vitale would say. Diaper dandy. 6'11", 19 year old. Oh man, he's shooting fifty five percent from the field. Hey, Everything. real quick, do you think that like they'll just weaken that Bernie's Dick Vitale when he dies? I think they'll just like march him <laughs> around. Absolutely, man. Dude, he may he may have been weakened Bernie us for the last like year and a half, dude. He looks he looks rough out there. Yeah. I've never so seen just, so like, many, just so prop many him up in a co- a crowd at like Cameron Indoor just looking crazy with sunglasses on. Just liver spots all over his face. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, keep going, guys. To watch out for. If you bring up Grace Bell, I'll be pissed. I hate Another guy who I've, I've really enjoyed all season long, Peter Jock. He's a guard from Iowa. He's a junior. The guy is balling this year. He is. I mean, he is a. He is a brother, and he <laughs> plays basketball very well. I really enjoy watching him. Um, He's, he's balling. He's shooting 50% from three. Okay, another guy, Deontay Davis, the young freshman from Michigan State, six foot ten from Mesquite yeah. Town, Mesquite, Michigan. Um, he, his, yeah. numbers, his numbers are not eye-popping, but this dude, I've seen some initial NBA mock drafts, and he's like a lottery pick right now. The guy is – he looks like his body structure. I'm not saying he plays like him. His body is like Anthony Davis. I've been saying that all year. So watch him. He is an X-Factor who starts for the Spartans now. Um and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's who I got. Who are you watching, Miz? Yeah, so I'm going with another guy from Iowa. I think Iowa's potentially dangerous, man. They play that that nasty, just white man basketball, and it's the sound <laughs> big time, man. It's it's that probable Nazi Jared Utoff. Um, just that big bastard. <laughs> probable <laughs> Nazi. Dude, just look at him. At the bare minimum, he's a sympathizer, if not a full-fledged member, man. He's voting for Trump, for sure. <laughs> totally. Totally. <laughs> um, man, so so I think he could do some damage. Um, Jake, you alluded to him. Uh, Chris Dunn from Providence, man. When that guy's shot's going, that kid can ball. He's like a 6'5 point guard out there. I like the senior leadership in the tournament. Um, and then I think the other guy, not like a big surprise, but... Um, Marcus Page from UNC, man, good luck guarding him when he's firing. Yeah, no, uh, I mean, like, Brandon Ingram, none of that. Like, that guy's the number two pick in the draft, right, if not the number one? Yeah, he's balling, but we were going for we were going for some other guys, Jake. No need to touch on the guys. Sorry, dude, like I said, dude, my, my uh, college basketball um, – Knowledge right now is pretty is pretty weak. I haven't really been following. There's no there's my problem, man. There's no like so yeah, I think what'd you just say? I was gonna say if you if that if your knowledge is down this year, I do have one easy NCAA question you can answer for me. Yeah. Which team will have the first set of crying fans this year? It's a tradition unlike any other with the NCAA tournament. So is this the first set of crying fans to be in like the end of the season montage? Or is this, like, the first set of crying fans? I mean, just the first set. The first one we'll see from the tournament. Oh, man. So, first set of crying fans. I think I'm going to go with, like, it's it's the Dukies, man, because I think they're going to get upset. I mean, and I would cry if Grayson Allen was my number one player. That guy's such a douche. He's like your prototypical Duke guy too, man. I just I hate him. I heard somewhere too that he ended the season with like 666 points. Like, like that's insane. Yeah, I mean he's had he's had a good year. I, Miz and I were both shaking our head 
to the uh, the Duke pick on that one. I do think Duke is a very good chance. It was Nova last year. Duke's a good one. It has to be someone who's expecting big things, so it's a traditional powerhouse. It has to be someone who feels entitled, so it's those rich white kids that go to Duke. So, yeah, I would say that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's Duke. I think, um, so here's, here's just a random tourney question, too. Like, uh, who who is a team that makes some noise? Like, Ada maybe that's going to be in that, you know, three seed to eight, or to like ten seed range. I mean, like Cal's got a got a good dude. They got a lottery pick, right? Could they do something? I think Cal Cal could. Miz mentioned Oregon um, a few minutes ago. I think they're going to be really solid. I've heard a lot of good things out of them. I mean, there's I mean, there's Carolina in in the Dukes of the world, and you just mentioned Duke is an upset one, but you never know. They won it last year, and a lot not a lot of people were giving them credit for that. I Man, I know again, I'm, I think I'm influenced by the Big Ten, but I really like I think a team to make, at least make some noise. I think both Indiana and Maryland could. I know Miz mentioned yeah. Iowa. I think the Big Yogi. Ten's real strong, but Yogi Ferrell, man, kid is balling, and he can carry that team, and they're playing playing real well. It's weird because Crean was. Green was like almost going to get fired at the beginning of the season there. I know, man. They had such a good year. Maryland, too, like they were a dumpster fire there for a while. Kind of still maybe are. And they could they could turn things around. And, and they got some talent. They got a lot of talent on that team. They just need to figure out their heads. Kentucky's another team, man, that hasn't really met expectations this year. Big turnaround, but I think they're firing. Um, they didn't win the SEC. A&M did. A&M's kind of a sneaky team. But that's another team that their fans are going to cry, man. That school, that's like the Duke of the SEC. It's so funny. I mean, Vandy kind of is, but A and M is just a bunch of like farm and white kids that do these. They have like male. They have like cheerleaders. They have organized cheers. I don't know. A and M is for a whole other podcast. But they, where was I? At? Oh yeah, Kentucky. I think Kentucky can make some noise. They can, It's like that year where they were like a five seed or something, and they just got NBA talent. And if guys are firing, they're gonna beat anybody. Yeah. yeah, I think Jake. I think I think you just hit on uh, Vanderbilt. Good luck to the number one seed that sees them winning the eight nine matchup if that's their seed. Um, Vandy is super super talented, um, and then my favorite man, the Dayton Flyers. They're gonna come in around that like seven eight nine seed and uh, do some damage again. Archie Miller, Archie Miller, folks. All right. Uh, all right, that's some good. That's some good NCAA talk. We're going to be talking about that for the next month. So let's let's move off that. Let's get into some of the weird topics we decided we wanted to talk yeah, about. Yeah. So I want look, I want a name for this segment. I, I'm toying with like the abstract. That seems pretty pretty no. crazy. You're shaking your head. You don't like it. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, let's the bottom of well, let's take that? suggestions. Let's take suggestions on that. All right. Um, but I, we'll come up with it. It's got something to do with the wormhole. And these are some of the ones that I'm really excited to hear our friend Matt Moorhead's answers to. All right, so this first one. So I just talked about Peter Jock from Iowa. Last week we talked about Young Jock and when we, Young Jock Peterson. And when we talked about Young Jock Peterson, we talked about how good that was such a good black guy name, but he's a white guy. So the first question tonight is a follow-up to that topic. I want to hear... Some of the best white guys with black guy names and best black guy with white guy names uh, in, in sports. Anyone anyone got any of those they want to chime in with? So before we start this, when I was going through this list, I realized how incredibly stereotypical my mind is because I'm like, oh, I'll go to baseball and all these guys will be white guys with black guy names. And then I was like, oh, I'll go to football. All these guys will be black guys with white guy names. And I went to like basketball, and I was like, same thing. These will be black guys with white guys' names, unless they're like centers, and then they're just gumpy white guys with black guy names. So it's like, it's totally sport based. Like, but that's that's a sidebar. Go go at it, Miz. I know you got a list. We just had one, right? Kevin Martin. You can't tell me that's not a white guy name. It is. It is. Real quick, uh, I did also realize Bill Simmons had also done this, which I did not realize. Reggie oh. Cleveland. Reggie Cleveland All Stars. <laughs> I like I it. Well, we're I calling these the Jock Peterson All Stars because of the last. Agreed, last Jock three. Peterson. All right, Miz, what do you got? All right, I got you six black guys that their names are white. Awesome. The, the first, Larry Fitzgerald. Come on, 
Fitzgerald ah. is the whitest last name ever. If I told you to draw me a cartoon picture of Larry Fitzgerald, you'd give me the goddamn leprechaun from Lucky Charms <laughs> boxes. Yeah, yeah but here's the deal. How many white guys do you know named Larry? My grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, fair enough. I mean, we got, I mean, we got, Larry, Larry, we got Larry and Lavi Moorhead. I love it. Um, number two on that list, Detroit Pistons finest, Tobias Harris. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Tobias is white. I always think of Tobias Funke, and I love it. <laughs> well, um, the next one, we'll go back to the, the Denver Nuggets, a little tie-in with the Michigan State Spartans, but Gary Harris. One, I've never met a baby named Gary, and two, no black guys after Sheffield should be named Gary. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know, man. Oh, speaking of Gary, do you know Gary Payton has a kid? He plays for oh, Oregon State. About Gary Payton. <laughs> what's, what's that? Gary yeah. Payton's a good one. Yeah, no, Gary Payton has Gary Payton the second. He plays for Oregon State. Another name to watch in the tournament. I think he's a second round pick too. The glove. What? What? What's like the glove junior? Like the mitten? I don't even know. Yeah, it's the mitten. Wait, is it Oregon State or Oklahoma State? Uh, it's it must be I don't know one of the OK states. It could have been Oklahoma State. Either way, he plays for O dot State. Correct. Yeah, O dot State. All right, Miz. What else you got? Uh, Chad Brown. I think Chad is possibly the whitest first name besides Keith. Is that the Denver radio guy that owns Juicy Burgers? Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't, dude, I thought that guy was white. Like they're like Ed Chad Brown's coming on next. I was like, that sounds like a brother. Um, sticking with the, the Denver sports scene, uh, possible future quarterback, Colin Kaepernick. That's a good one. Sounds very white. Colin, you don't see a lot of black guys. I mean, Colin. That's, this, this is my argument Like with football guys. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, that's, that's a tough one to get over. You need to have like, you need to be like, a, I guess like a Steve Smith for me to be like. <laughs> All right. I got, a, I got a couple here. I got a couple here. All right, um, th these are uh, black guys with white guy names. Just a couple here. My my first one that I like a lot is Kyle O'Quinn. The <laughs> big fan, Kyle O'Quinn. Yes. That made me laugh. Um, how about Lord Robert Covington? Mm, the Lord. Lord Rob. Um, this guy's not he's not playing anymore. But remember former outfielder Garrett Anderson. Garrett huh. Anderson. Yeah. Wait. Is it, wait. Uh, that's a really good one. I don't even know. I don't even know. I can't. Yeah. I couldn't tell you. If you ask me, I don't even know. It sounds white, right? Gotta be white. Yeah. yeah. All right. And then this one. This one made me laugh. Dennis Schroeder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. Made me laugh. All right. And then flipping the script. These are white guys. These are white guys with black names. All right. And this first one, or the second one, is, is questionable. Actually, no, this first one's questionable. Jacoby Ellsbury? He's not really uh, white. What is yeah, he? Yeah, he's a white guy. Okay, okay. Miz, I know you'll appreciate this one. I know two white Jacobys, actually. There you go. Uh, Miz, you'll appreciate this one. This one is for you. Darius Sangalia. Ooh, nice. How black does that sound? Incredibly. <laughs> Like midnight black. Um, okay, maybe this one's just me. Does JJ cool. Reddick JJ Reddick sound black? No, no. Okay. Maybe it's because I know like I'm like you're like oh I know exactly who that is. All right, and then this is another old baseball player along the lines of Garrett Anderson. But tell me if this one, if you don't know this one, if this one's white or black. Reggie Willits. Ah, <laughs> uh, black guy. <laughs> the whitest guy you've ever seen. Damn it. All right, um, I had, I got a few here. Um, Paul Millsap. <laughs> That's good. Hi, I'm Paul Millsap. Uh, I'm, yeah, I mean. I'm Russell Sprouts. Uh, Mike Tolbert. I just think of a big tub of goo. <laughs> and um, I, I legitimately thought this guy was black for two years. Freddie Freeman. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a real good one. And then uh, this guy is neither white nor black. Well, no, that's not true. 
Uh, Khalid Elamine. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, goodness. Jay but, Beth. yeah, man, that's, I mean, this, yeah, that's just stereotypical minds at work right there. Oh, I got, like, I, I, I got had. one last one. One last one we can end on. Um, <laughs> Boo Weekly. Yes. Oh, speaking of which, good Boo Weekly stories. That dude's rocking Columbia fishing shirts now. Untuck. Like those button up with the vents. Like he's not even wearing polos anymore. It's like, he's like, I'm going to hit some balls and I'm going to go catch some bass. It is fantastic. <laughs> that guy's my favorite golfer. Um, yeah, it's because he's doing camo like half the time. It's it's so good. So, oh, Jill. Oh, she has clothes on. I'm like, I was weird. Anyways. So we got one more thing to talk about. Do you want to hit Aaron Andrews? That happened this week. We've been going for a while, but we should probably hit it. It's a big story. I will preface anything we say by I think that what happened to Aaron Andrews is pretty awful, and I can get, like, how you'd be, like, kind of messed up in the head, like, <laughs> after that. I mean, so I'm just going to say that, and, and we can talk about it, but uh, otherwise uh, I'm pretty satisfied. <laughs> What do you got? Are we touching it? All right, good sidebar. I mine are funny. Mine are not creepy. Although I can see where we could go the creepy route, but okay. So, so these are real quick. These are what? What did you say? What did you send out today? Um, if you could peep on any sportscaster, <laughs> <laughs> alive, dead, real, or fictitious, who would it be? Um. So I mean, there's some obvious answers. I don't know, and Jake, I know you are a very big Katie Nolan fan. I'm not saying that's where we would go, because that's bordering the creepy thing you were just talking about. There's I also, think if you, like, yeah, if you say <laughs> there's also There's also Kay Adams, who's in a very attractive sport, sports supporter, but again, down that creepy road. So I'm thinking, I'm kind of leaning between two guys. First one is Champ Kind from Channel 4 News in San Diego. <laughs> He's a pretty good. He's a pretty good sports go whammy. He's a pretty good sports recorder, but that's not the one I'm going to go with. He's going to get second place. The one I'm going to go with is the one, the only, <laughs> Brian Collins from Ball State University newscasting team. Is that the boom dynamite guy? That is the boom goes the dynamite guy. <laughs> Why would you want to peep on that guy? Uh, I plead the fifth. <laughs> I just put. Fantastic. Miz, what you got on this? Oh, I think first and foremost, I'd want to peep on Dick Vitale. Um, <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure he, wears an, I, I'm sure he wears an adult diaper, and there's got to be a vagina under there somewhere. <laughs> I feel that him and who is the old Notre Dame coach that used to call games? Oh, Lou Holtz and his retainer? <laughs> no, 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 the basketball guy. Oh, yeah, the guy with bronze skin and nice white hair. Yeah, what was his name? Is that Digger Phelps? Yeah, I bet. Oh. I think that Dick Vitale and Digger Phelps just share rooms. So you're probably getting a two for one there. <laughs> hey, Dick, do you want to rent? Do you want to rent Spectre tonight? <laughs> Whoa! I hit the wrong button. I've got uh, some other weird thing. Uh, man, my uh, my my sick twisted mind wouldn't mind uh, peeping in on the ghost of Harry Carey. <laughs> Solid. You could basically do that by just peeping on Bob Euchre. Oh my god. Is that yours? Is that yours, Cheeps? No. Uh I mean I didn't put a lot of thought into this one. So. Hey! Cheeps! <laughs> is that yours? <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one, man. Um alright, man. Anything else? Hey! Cheeps! Oh, we don't know the mood is not made of barbecue spare ribs, but if it was, would you eat it? <laughs> it's a simple question. Even a baby can answer it. That's a spot-on uh, impersonation. Hey, real quick, if you're Aaron Andrews, and are you back on the sidelines next year? That's something I wanted to know. Like you just made forty-five million dollars. She's not gonna get paid all that. I heard like the the one dude, the stalker's on the hook for half of it. Apparently, the hotel chain's on the hook for like twenty-eight and a half, and this guy's on the hook. That'd be like you or I on the hook for like thirty million bucks. Be like, ah, sorry, Aaron, that's not gonna happen. 
really messed that one up, but you're not getting my money. Um, hey, did, does she go back? Does she go yeah. back to the line? Don't skirt the question. What sports reporter are you going to peep on? I, I don't have an answer to this. Actually, you know what? I think... Um, you're defaulting to Bob Euchre then. I'll, I, I'd do Bob Euchre. I mean, like, I also think that, like, Big Al would be hilarious. I just wonder what Big Al Williams would be like in a hotel room. <laughs> I bet there's a party going on. Dude, there'd just be mounds of, like, black IPO right there. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. You beat me to it. Come on down to the black eyed pea. <laughs> um, but no, like, is Aaron Andrews on the sidelines next year, or is she hanging out? Uh, no answer. I, I don't know. I, why not? I think she's fine. I think she's totally fine. Right. This is right, we should, last thing real quick. Andrews, so, we should get off Aaron Andrews, and we should quickly touch on the people versus O.J. Simpson. Have you seen this? Oh, I, no, I haven't been watching it. Miz, have you seen this? Oh yeah. Doesn't I'm, like who doesn't is David David Schwimmer's in this thing, right? He plays Rob Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Schwimmer and Cuba Gooding Jr. is the best they could do. Yep. All star cast, baby. Okay, so but it, but it's I mean it's in the news, everyone's talking about it. We all know what happened, you know, we all know what happened there. So we don't need to talk about that, but it got us thinking too. What other big sports stories would make for great FX miniseries, and who would play said athlete in that in that series? So you know OJ Simpson, and that's Cuba Gooding. Again, I don't think he's anything like OJ Simpson. Maybe a, kid, a psychopath like him. Um, did anyone think of anything good for this one? I mean Ray Carruth. That's a big one. Who would play Ray Carruth? <laughs> and who would play the body they found in his trunk? Didn't Ray Carruth look like either Keegan or, Pe- or Key or Peel, one of those two? Doesn't he look like the tall, skinny one, McCringleberry? Yeah. yeah. I, think that's one of the ra- I think he would this play. This thing's going off the rails so hard right now. I love it. <laughs> He's hilarious. Okay, so all right, so we got we got Key or Peel, whichever oh, one that man. is. The Kobe story, Eagle. You just call it Eagle, Colorado. Who would play Kobe? <laughs> hmm. Greg Hardy? <laughs> that's a pretty good one that's a pretty good one alright I got one how about um, this so can movie you see about... the kid from Fruitvale Station playing Kobe though he looks kind of like Kobe who's ever seen the Fruitvale Station uh, you haven't that like got a lot of run about that like what was it about oh it was about the dude that I don't know I forget but it was the kid from Friday Night Lights the answer is no one <laughs> no one saw that. <laughs> and she gets called out for referencing a movie that he hasn't actually seen. Did you watch that before or after you watched Hotel Rwanda? I have watched Hotel Rwanda. Don Cheadle, baby. All right, I got one. I got one. All right, this Those movie. My activist college days. <laughs> oh. All right, I got one. This one is titled "State College Scandal: The Penn State Story." <laughs> Who's Joe Pa? Give it to me. All right. Joe Pa is Abe Vigoda. He's dead. <laughs> That's fine. You can make it. <laughs> so, is, so is Joe Pa. <laughs> All right. So Joe Pa, Abe Vigoda is Joe Pa, and Jared Fogle is Jerry Sandusky. Oh, no. You can't do that. Except, you know what? He's probably coming out of prison looking like Sandusky. I think he's put on, like, 30 pounds already. Let's get back on that Subway diet. (laughs) Andy, that's great, man. That 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 was great. I'd watch that. I'd watch that shit. Oh, yeah. Um, You got any, Miss? Yeah, I I, I got two. I think the first one, I would call it... High Dive, and it would be the Greg Lugana story starring Charlie Sheen. Oh, my God. (laughs) I feel that you stole that from the Internet somewhere. I most certainly did not, but you guys are welcome. I I apologize to the audience who just immediately had to put their headphones down. <laughs> We're gonna, like I said, there's, there, like, the, I'm gonna write down. Don't listen to the last ten minutes if you're easily offended. <laughs> All right, I got one more, and then I'll pass it back to you, Miz. 
All right, my second one is titled The Life and Times of Darren Sharper. <laughs> <laughs> and it's starring the one and only Bill Cosby. <laughs> these are all Lifetime movies, by the way. None of these are like, none of these are picked up by anybody. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I think State College Scandal, the Penn State story, you had a big budget, man. Hey, how much thought did you put into these titles? <laughs> Just a minute or two at work. I don't know. <laughs> they seem pretty well thought out to me. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. It's a, They're Keystone Productions. They'll be Keystone Productions. Yeah. Uh, what you got, Miz? You got one more for us? Yeah, I'm kind of debating between two, but I figure at this point uh, <laughs> nobody's going to be nobody's going to be that much more offended. So, so let's call this one Olympics, comma special, starring Vin Diesel, Sly Stallone, and Don Trump. <laughs> That's uh, an all-star cast right awesome. there. Awesome. It sounds like it's like just the, the next the next version of uh, Expendables. You're gonna make like ten of those. Yep. It's gonna be a franchise. All right, Ben. I think that was good. I wanted to hit dog sledding, um, but you know what? I'm the only one that cares about the Iditarod, and it is what it is. What's that? You really care about the Iditarod? Dude, I I follow the Iditarod every year. Weird. Like, so, I could probably handicap the Iditarod for you at the beginning of the year. Like, if I could bet on it, I could make money. I've been doing this for, like, five years. Dude, I've got these weird, like, sports that I just latch on to and I just, like, follow them. I don't know. Do you have any like that? Uh, not that I – I mean, obviously I'm a tennis fan, but I was just thinking we need to do an Iditarod. Oh, shit. We forgot about Sharapova. Ah, it doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter. We, uh, we – uh, never mind. I forgot where I was The only thing I'm bummed out with Sharapova is, like – Nobody's really like hammered on the power shot clips. There should be memes of her with like the cannon power shot things all over the place right now. Yeah, that's a, that's a failure on the internet's part. But no, right. man, I'm into the Iditarod. I love it. It's going on right now. Uh, maybe we'll recap it next time. But I think we've gone long enough and really went off the rails. It was dialed. Miz, well, how how did how'd you feel you did first time, first guest? I, went, I like the three man worked out well. Yeah, I, I, I love being part of the, the production. I am slightly embarrassed for the words that have come out of my mouth, especially lately. <laughs> oh, but you know what? what? You're going to listen to this tomorrow. I'll send you the link, and you're going to be like, oh, my God. I can't believe, I, I can't believe that's going to go on the Internet. <laughs> so but be it. it. That's least, okay, man. We only got we're ever going to run for office. Nope, and we, we got 24 listens last time. And I think I know 23 people that listen to this thing. So, so one, one internet random. Yep. I will say I got, I got texts from guys that you guys don't know that listen, though, so they're going to have a really dialed opinion of you. Funny. Funny. Good stuff. All right, All right bros. Good stuff. That's all I got. Well done. Any last words? Parting shots? Yeah, I got one last thing I wanted to say. Give it to me, Smokey. I don't know too much. All right, and we're out. Good night, gentlemen. <laughs>